need one more. I just need one more. Hey, I just need one more. I just need one more. Bitch, bitch. Need one more. I just need one more. Bitch, bitch. Then I'm pick up the cross head, okay? Like the blunt, my nigga. Pass his beat to the left so I could press. Total my hits like I didn't wrecked. Who is next? Niggas asleep like pillow pets. Getting foreign head from a bad bitch from Budapest. Call your bet. Cause I'm just trying to get a quick check. Then nice rest. camera. It's all about that action. Y'all know what it is. It's your boy, Son of the Waves. This is What's the Wave. Thank y'all for tuning in. Episode 51. What? We here, bro. Right. Like I said, we almost a year in. Thank y'all for uh, wherever you may be watching, probably on YouTube or wherever you may be listening. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, all the stuff. Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Tell your auntie because this is her favorite podcast. But in all seriousness, thank y'all for supporting. We here. I got two great stars in the making in here. We got Good Company Lance and ZZ What's in the you? building today. How y'all yeah, doing? Man. How y'all living? Good, good. You Come know, me, you know, GC Lancey Bow, Lancey Bow, yes, Lance, sir. all Ooh, of that, all that, all, all of names. that. But my name Lance. I don't like none of them names. They stupid, right? <laughs> but uh, okay. my still stage goes name, by them though. Right? Right. My right. stage name is Lancey Bow, and for my friends, I'm Uncle Bean when I'm at Russ's show. But no, <laughs> but like the Uncle Bean shit. They don't like when I went to the other when I went to the other comedy spots and I tell them that look at me like I'm stupid. So right. I'm, like, I'm just go with Lancey Bow. We, we, we gonna rock with the bow. We gonna rock right. with Lancey Bow for sure. <laughs> That's funny. Glad to have y'all in. Glad um, to bring y'all on a beautiful Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday here in Vallejo, California. It's a wonderful afternoon. Man, I'm just um, glad the Niners didn't win. Who we could talk about? It. We already sent the shots. <laughs> man. We already sent the shots, man. That's I feel from my it, mama. Though. She called me every every. Every week during the playoffs until mm. y'all niggas... You a Niners fan? <laughs> no, nah. I'm a uh, Charger fan, ironically, yeah. Oh, I don't yeah, like you it's either. Okay. Oh, okay. It's okay. It's all good. It's okay. <laughs> you feel me? Um, she called me every day mm. until y'all until them niggas lost the uh, playoffs. Yeah. And talking about, we going to the Super Bowl. You know how the Niners the Super Bowl fans be, bro. You party. already I'm know. I'm like, bro, this is not 1993. No one cares, bro. Like, <laughs> you already let it know go. how them Niners like, fans be, boy. They don't let bro. that shit live down where it's nobody. Ever. Them know. niggas win one game. That's all they talk about. Yeah, Niners fans. They all a little bit worse than Raider fans. Me just being raised in the Bay and not being a fan of either team. Raiders fans are all crazy, but Niners, I don't know. They a little extra. I how the know, fuck that like, happened? How you not a fan of neither team? I, Nigga said, I'm going to go to San Diego. You born and raised here, too? Like, yeah, yeah. For the most part. I just went to elementary school in Reno, but my first. I, my first favorite player in the NFL was Ladanian Tomlinson, so the running back for the Chargers. Okay. So I was saying it had to be LD. It was the Bulls, it was the LD, the Bulls, the jerseys, the powder blues. I was like, that's my squad. That's my squad. So that's just that's just how it happened. Right. But um, yes, yeah, so once again, thank y'all to, for coming in today. Got some good current events that we're going to uh, bounce off of y'all, get y'all thoughts on that. For sure, talk some new music, maybe some new movies and TV y'all been watching. Talk a little bit of sports, for sure. You know, NBA playoffs. Uh, well, All-Star Weekend, excuse me, around the corner, Super Bowl Sunday. Maybe get y'all Super Bowl pick. Who y'all think y'all gonna win? Uh, win the big dance for sure. And then we're gonna get into the the comedy realm, the comedy game, because I have two up and coming comedians in the making, which is fucking legendary. It's well, rare that one. you meet. And just one, one, one that just be getting on. Nah, she <laughs> <a> comedian, <laughs> just be on the mic. Nah, she's a comedian. She funnier than me. Come on, oh, on stage, but goodness. she don't consider herself a comedian because I don't know. But it's okay. And, like, and my, nigga, my she's focus hilarious. is the platform that we create and something funny. That's the focus. I, I love it. And we're going to talk about that, too. Yes, we'll, we'll talk about the platform um, in specific as well. So, yes, we definitely got to showcase that for the people so they can know. Um, but without further ado, let's just get into it. First off, let's let's start off talking um, maybe a little bit of COVID talk. You know, we're still in a panoramic. You feel me? We've been in this motherfucker <laughs> right. for a minute for it seemed like three, four, five years at this point. Um, how have y'all been personally, professionally um, handling the pandemic, whether being outside, being inside, you know, the ups, the downs? How's the fan been and all Shit. that good stuff? I was already down before the pandemic. What? Nigga. I was, y'all just joined my life. Nigga, I was having a <laughs> shitty time in 2018. Nigga. Oh, man. Yeah, 2019 came, everybody got sick and shit. And I was like, Welcome to the party. Nigga. We all Welcome miserable. I was sitting in the house anyway. Nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> but uh, nah, it was it wasn't that bad at first mm. because, like I said, I was going through some personal shit. Mm. So like, nigga, not going outside was part of my agenda anyway. Yeah, so yeah, nigga, yeah. when they locked us down, it was whatever. I was mad that my fucking job didn't like my job. I work at a where I worked at a warehouse, mm -hmm. a paper warehouse, like making cardboard boxes. Dunder and Mifflin. Shit. Nah, okay, okay. you making sure. Right, right, making sure. Right, right. right, my nigga Stanley in this bitch. <laughs> uh, nah. 
I, we make cardboard boxes and shit mm-hmm. for wine companies and shit. And gotcha. these motherfuckers was drinking and ordering Amazon. Mm-hmm. So, nigga, we was never not working. And that shit pissed me off. Everybody else, yeah. I, everybody else I, uh, going to Miami and Vegas, fucking off that EDD money. I didn't get none of it. <laughs> I but feel I'm, that. But I'm glad, though, because tax time coming. Y'all niggas got to pay that back. I don't. Talk <laughs> about it. And I got That's kids. Real. What you talking about? It's my it's my uh, PPP right now. Come on. You talk about me? it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Hey. I'm glad to see you were able to stay busy a little bit. ZZ, how about you? Uh, they hit me the opposite like Word? complete opposite i was i had to completely change my whole life wow, i'm the type damn. of person that's like running around constantly i got three kids yeah so yeah we went from school to no school to, right like it was it was many my it took bad. a lot of adjusting for me and uh learning how to work from home because mm-hmm. i never really was a work from home type of person i mean i've always Start I like I started my own business, but right. at the same time that was always just like a side thing. Yeah. So I will say the the positive is it made you like if you're a creative, yeah, definitely gave you like the time and Facts. space to um be more dive more into your creativity. Mm-hmm. But you also had to still like you still had life. And if you're like a parent yeah. like me, yeah, it's like you still had to take care of your kids and so you had the time, but mm. you didn't. Right. So it was weird. Like you were at home, but then you had everybody at right. home. Right. <laughs> then you had to become the teacher and the daycare yeah, exactly. and everything else. So it was many for me. And then no. we just caught, like last month, we just caught the Omarion shit. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Omarion yeah. or whatever. It was yeah, actually yeah, I'm glad. Like, uh, Delta Con or yeah. Decepticon. Whatever felt like we was dying at first. Right. No. For like a day and a half. And then we niggas was, was quarantining fine. together and shit. Because yeah. we, we were like, we didn't know if the kids had it. We were trying to stay away from them. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. That shit was so glad, fast. Glad bro. to see y'all took y'all time, you know, stayed away from everybody and, you know, took it seriously. So, exactly. We were able to bring you here on the podcast. Yeah. Right. Like that. Free, nigga. Exactly, right. man. Shit was gone sure. after like five hey, days. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. Right. We, we take that shit seriously. You feel me? Even, uh, you know, um, everybody in this household, you know, we just try to make sure. That I, I, it was a minute last month. I just did solo episodes just so mm. I wasn't bringing in hella guests and stuff like yeah. that. So, because that shit is real. That shit is definitely real. Yeah. But I'm glad to hear y'all on the, uh, the, the comeback, the, you know, on the rise yeah, up. You feel me? And hopefully we can leave all that, definitely that COVID stuff in the past. Um, But now we are, shit, two two weeks into February. It's already, shit, uh, a month or two into 2022. This shit already flying by like never before. Um, Black History Month is here. You feel me? Shout out to all the black influencers, all the influential people making a difference in the black community uh, for sure. Um, Any people y'all looked up to, maybe just as youngins um, who were, you know, a person of color or a black person that y'all looked up to, whether it could be personal family, it could be somebody locally, like a like a like a La Russell, a Mac Dre, anything like that, or somebody big like a E Forty, a Jamie Foxx, a Will Smith, somebody like that. Any, right. I mean, any of those influential characters in your life that you could just off the top of your head. I mean, you you already said it, Mac Dre for sure. Facts. That nigga was like a god to me. I used to <laughs> like watch all every piece of footage of him just talking. I used to just watch when yeah. I first moved back out here. You feel mm-hmm. me? So it was like. He was like a big influence on me personally and just my attitude on life. Like that yeah. nigga, his like, like depiction of life was like crazy. It was just like nigga, enjoy yourself, man. One nigga. of one. It one was of like one. It, he was on some gangster shit. But if you really listen to him, he was just mm-hmm. was out here living, like enjoying life. I'm nigga. saying though, for you know real, I mean? like any nigga that can go, any nigga that can pop some shrooms, appeal, and then go perform, <laughs> nigga, is a happy motherfucker. Yes. Yeah, I'm about to say he's just living nigga, every. He's living that's it just up. Living like that was how I wanted to be. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I was a 14 year old kid. I didn't really know adulthood yeah right but, right but that shit sounded good you feel me like you said mac dre of course la Russell, that's my brother man we yeah. you know each other for years now facts, seeing his facts. growth is just mania and just his focus and drive is like crazy facts. it's unmatched that's black set you black excellence right there for man sure. that's a legend in the making mm-hmm. shit right. um personal like Family wise, I ain't even gonna hold you. I ain't really got nobody. Yeah, <laughs> hey, shit, that's real. No, that's real though. Me. I got a lot of niggas I didn't want to be like. Hey, you know? hey, and that's I still that's still a, a good influence. Like. Exactly, you knew who not to be. I was one of them kids that you didn't have. You know, they be like, oh, you don't believe fat me's greasy shit like that. Mm-hmm. I'm a nigga that learned from example. Nigga. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you finna get your ass beat, are you fucked up or going to? I'm not. Finna I'm, do I'm that. not doing that. I'm not bro. doing that. You, bro, you, you know, we we grew up together. You know me. I'm out. See, shit go left. I'm out the way. We knew we knew to watch. Don't speak. 
speak on it. That's y'all yeah, do. That's, y'all that, stay over there with y'all. that. You feel yeah. me? We gonna go over here. We, we going to the skate park. <laughs> hey, you feel me? Exactly. We <laughs> gonna go me? smoke. We gonna smoke at the park real right. quick and we chill, go, man. Right, right. We ain't gotta go chill on the block or or, right. or chill at the I've at the never, liquor store. I'm that. glad I've never wanted to do. I'm glad I had enough people in my life show me that wasn't the way. Because a lot Facts. of people see niggas living like that and think that shit cool. Facts. Because they only see one part of it. Mm-hmm. But as a kid growing up and seeing like niggas like knowing the shit and seeing your cousins and uncles go to jail and in and out of jail can't really do nothing. Yeah, that shit not cool. That's not fun. Got, yeah, always got to go back to that shit. Is like not fun. I'm glad like a lot of people from high school see that. Even if they was on that shit in high mm-hmm. school, a lot of them is coming out of that shit. Facts. Some of them don't make it, but a lot of them do. So I yeah. think that's more important than anything. And we was, we was talking about that when I had KNO on. on. Um, we we're talking about just being. If, uh, the black influence just in the community how like the OGs and stuff like that and we went from calling my our parents friends and stuff like miss that mister this and to right. now they're just uncle and TT and, and yeah. uncle and dude. like it was a different level of respect I used to respect like that's Miss Wendy like I, that's why that's not my auntie no that's Miss Wendy like right. I, I, I still have that level of respect from her and how the community we don't respect the OGs like we once did. We don't listen to the old heads. We damn near you got motherfuckers talking about they'll pull up to your granny house and, and pull pull gats and caps on her and shit. Like yeah, it's wild. Like right. there used to be at least kind of you know code of conduct. You feel me? There used yeah. to be rules to the game. Like they ain't got no script to stick to, man. man like, it's, what? It's, it's too much. It's man. too much. It's That's too many cameras. Funny you say oh. that because like one of if I'm speaking on the black influences of in my life, mm-hmm. most of them were. I grew up, you know how they say it takes a village. I grew up Facts. playing sports and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. so I grew up with mostly like black women. So mm-hmm. Miss Patty, yeah. Miss Sheila, those were people that influenced me to as like who, who I am as a mother right now. You feel me? Like you the way me? I am with my kids is besides what my mom taught me. Right. But besides, you know, what my mother taught me, it's from them. Exactly. Everything I, I was always at their house. Always, you see or, how they exactly Or if my you. mom wasn't around, they were on my ass. You like, feel me? Exactly. They have permission. <laughs> you feel me? Get right. up on your helmet. They need permission. They didn't exactly. care. Exactly. <laughs> it was to that point to where your neighbors mama, wouldn't even need permission <laughs> right. to get up on you. They could Bruh. check you. You feel me? They could they could pull you by ear to your mama house and tell them what you got into. Fact. I, now, I, nowadays, like... If if your neighbor talk to your kid the wrong way, y'all, like, it's funk. You feel me? Bruh. Like it's not in that yeah. village feel no more. So it's, it's really wild. Not. It's That's really crazy. It's wild, man. We we in a different time. We're in a time where everything's more connected yet more divided than ever. You know, so it's wild. But yeah, I'm uh, social media. I'm about, hey, speaking of it, uh, speaking of some <laughs> trendy social media news uh, lately, has been going on. Shout out. Uh, I had to hit the, the Tyrese congratulations to Riri. She pregnant by by ASAP. Right, that was so dope. Sounded hurt. <laughs> yeah, but congratulations. <laughs> oh my right. gosh! Right. But right. um, it, it finally happened. I feel like everybody been I feel like every year we speculate Rihanna pregnant, but now it's actually right. a thing and right. she popping out now. That's so. hella funny. Uh, I'm y- a y- y'all think she? Fan. Yeah, you think she gonna drop some music ever again? I'm or sorry, you think Rihanna, because we don't never say her name right. She yeah. says her name all the time, and we never say it right. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it at Ri. We'll keep it at Ri. <laughs> right, sure. right. Ri, Ri. Um, <laughs> with, with the baby coming, do you think she's really done with music, or you think she's just gonna, you know? Hell no. What? Keep, I don't, I'm. I mean, what? she's been taking Who this this beauty that? brand to the max. It seems like that, this has been her true. priority. I'm not the. I don't follow Riri that close, but it just seemed like right. that's her priority over this the music right now. Room. Now with being a mother, <laughs> I don't follow Riri. Right, right, right. I'm just saying now, now with her down, being a mother. Downplay it now, downplay it. I don't right, right. be following right. her like that. But you, you know, you got closer wrong. ear. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> with her being a mother now, how how do you see that playing out in her career? You think she's gonna go back to the music? Just keep doing the beauty thing? Just fall back into the into the wayside and just be a cool ass mom? That's the interesting I'm, thing. As a mother, I think it your kids inspire you. Mm. So I can't see her giving up music, which is like, you know, you can right. see how much she loves music. Yeah, so I know yeah. she's got her beauty brands and all yeah. that stuff, which she does love, but your kids will inspire you. Like she's gonna be inspired in a way she doesn't even understand yet. Like she right. doesn't even know yet. Cause mm. she doesn't have kids yet. So that's real. She's gonna she's gonna I think that it's gonna we might get a fire album after the baby. Oh, you, you think know it's gonna saying? spark something inside it, of the It just okay. might. Okay. I think it will. I never really thought of it from that perspective. Yeah, or me, it might like be I like said, a more lovey dovey one because you know she a yeah. bad bitch. So facts. facts. <laughs> it might be a more, more lovey dovey type, type Yeah, of feel. but but at yeah. the same time I think it'll be it'll be different, but I think we're gonna love it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that I feel I definitely see how you can see how becoming a mother definitely will have a reflection in her music. And maybe, like you said, in her beauty brand and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I just feel like 
every year we either trying to get Riri pregnant or tell her to drop an album. So Man. Right. <laughs> now one of those things happened. So she she got the baby on the way. I know she, right. uh, everybody's been waiting for that album or so. Shout out to ASAP though, for real, man. I feel like shout out to ASAP. I feel like it seemed like that's what been a long do? time coming. I don't know. Right. What it did he like do? Why did everybody say shout out to ASAP? What did he do? He got, he got he Rihanna. Mary? Yeah, I mean, he got Rihanna. Yeah. I mean, if you gonna shout out Jay Z for other reason being a dope rapper, what? he got <laughs> B. Like, right. I mean, shout out my nigga Jay. He said, I what did I mean, he do? She might what like weird. Every nigga might be weird. She might like weird niggas. He might not have did nothing special. You feel me? It's okay. Whatever he did, Drake couldn't do. That's the only thing I know. That's the easy thing. Shout out my nigga ASAP, bro. Whatever he did. That's what he, he feel got. Me? He got the- I mean, that's all he got. Apparently, yeah. You feel me? That's, that's, that's all his. He right. That that's what she that wanted. Nigga, man. My nigga Drake professed his love to Riri on on national TV, and she pushed this nigga away. Well, hey, like what? She like what she like? What did she you like? What, she like? Like? what did you do to her? She liked the dark skin and niggas over the light skin right. niggas. You feel me? She right. like you feel me? I think she liked the privacy. They have been low key. I think you feel right. me. I don't see you don't really hear nothing about them. Right. You feel me being in the spotlight. I mean, like, they but, starting to pop out now. You know, being with the prep, but, public pu- pregnancy being public. Right. They're being more. I wouldn't young, say yeah. breath fell off, but it's like what what who's different, checking different avenues before Riri? Who was checking for ASAP? Uh, I have a lot of Do, Yeah, I was like, yeah, just like he's a different avenue. Different like, avenues. Like he went into fashion. I was about to say he doing his fashion about, shit. I'm talking about music wise. Oh, like, I mean, like, shit. He was doing his shit. Niggas ain't heavy on fashion. They follow rappers trends. Like if mm-hmm. nigga, if if <laughs> if a nigga that's as hot right now wears some, they gonna wear it. They don't even know why. True. Niggas be wearing but bitch I, max. I would say I say ASAP always been on the fashion chip. Oh no, for, because for real. Just for real. as an artist, he always been pretty flaco and yeah, this and yeah, that. No, no, no. I'm not knocking his fashion since I'm just saying like niggas don't be in tune to fashion like that so if he not dropping hard ass songs nobody gonna fuck what he wearing true but I mean, less it go, it go like hand in hand yeah because like you said at the be- at the end of the day niggas know him for being a rapper so right so it's like they not talking and about that like you go to shade room right not exactly that <laughs> right now you know baby daddy shit baby that worked daddy. for me man I mean, right. that worked right. right. for 90% of niggas baby daddy shit exactly um but no that 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 has been crazy um some more also trending news as far as celeb Kanye been in the news left and right um, with dealing with his children and TikTok and stuff like that. That ain't dealing as, with his children. He's dealing with his say, ego. As as a, as a parent, how do how do y'all see that? As as people with you know your own human beings that y'all have to take care of, how do you see that playing out with just the dynamic? Even you know being separate from you feel me your your mate or your counterpart or your baby mother or baby father. That dynamic of adjusting of how to bring your kid around other people or expose them to certain, you know, things on the internet and stuff like that. How do y'all see that playing out? Um, I know it's different because they're in the public eye, so everything is just magnified. Yeah. But just, you know, coming from some normal people that we are, I guess, you know. Like you said, being somebody got a kid and not being with the kid's uh, parent, it's, and in, in going through that whole situation of being married and not yeah. being married yeah. and, and having to deal with that, even like, like on a microcosm of it, like, you know, maybe a hundred people know what's going on in your life on social media. Right, right. As a regular person, right. Versus a hundred thousand, a hundred million. But at the end of the day, when you go on social media, putting your fucking business out there that people don't need to know about, you're putting your you business me? out there, you're embarrassing yourself and your family. Like you, he, I, my problem with Kanye's situation is, bro, you claim you're doing this for your family, but yo, if you don't want your daughter on TikTok, but you're not addressing these issues privately, you going on yeah. social media to address these issues while your daughter is still on social media. So Very your true. daughter is seeing all this, and she's embarrassed. If she don't see it, she go to school, and somebody's gonna somebody talk gonna about say it. Some, yeah, somebody today. gonna say some. She gotta live with this, bro. You, Very true. you embarrassing your daughter and her namesake, but she didn't ask for none of this, bro. Mm. You yeah, fucked up true. your marriage, or she fucked up. Well, whoever fucked up, fucked up. That yeah. has nothing to do with your kid. And for you to bring the next nigga into it when you got somebody, it's just weird. That's, it's it's so sticky. Like I, it's weird. You get to divorced. Me. You get divorced and you just hop on the next man like a week but, later. That's, but that's the cold part about it is, is there's money involved. They haven't even went to court. They just been separated. They yeah, haven't this even is the process. went to the process of doing anything or breaking up shit. And do, she's really working with this nigga because she know he has mental issues. Yeah. And when they go to court, the judge they don't give a fuck about that. If you're not getting help and you're not taking them pills, and, and yeah. then he gonna get on social media talking about everybody against and they, him. They gonna pull that and up they, in court yeah, too. All that shit. All that shit up. He gonna like, oh, they're using this again, motherfucker. You're giving them the shit to use. Against you and it's Facts. and it's people 
it, that's sitting around you that's mm. not telling you the real, bro. And I hate that for famous people and Probably people a of lot, influence. A lot of yes men around them. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of dick yes writers and, and, and motherfuckers that are scared to tell you about yourself, bro. Facts. You get to a certain point, people would really be scared to tell you about yourself. Facts. And that's like crazy. I never want to be at a point where anybody felt like they can't... Nigga, you fucking up. You right. feel me? Right. Like, you need to hear that sometimes. I don't give a fuck how smart of a person you are, how exactly. genius, how many fucking Grammys you sold. Not perfect. Everybody got to be corrected. Nigga, you fuck up. Everybody you a human. Corrected, yeah. You fuck up. So why is you? Why is nobody saying, "Hey, bro, get off social media"? I think media. he's got people telling him that, though. I think people have people have said it in public. Mm-hmm. They've told him. Yeah, but, but he, he but he's his own person. He's, he's on that point day. where when somebody say he's something he don't like, he's the enemy. You see how he just came at Kid Cudi? Uh, yeah, right, right. that was yeah. fucked up, bro. I think it's that, just that's, sad. A, that's a lot. Yeah. It's honestly just sad because at the end of the day, I it, all I care about is those kids. Like Facts. it's just sad for them. We exactly, were just talking about yeah. that this morning, like seeing that. Seeing his kid, you know what I mean, like Seeing him posting his kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parents can't even be in the same fucking room because one yeah. of them act a fucking fool. Like I used to hate when my parents used to argue at the house. I'll be damned if they did it at school. Like you feel me, and that's like public at you feel me your community, let alone on right. live in front of like you said imagine, hundreds yeah. of millions. Like that's imagine, imagine crazy. Your, like yo, you had a birthday, y'all had your graduation party, your mom and daddy getting into it. Yeah, like like how the fuck? damn. Like you can't even, Damn, like, mama. Right? You laughing? Did that happen? Right. To you? <laughs> He's Damn. like, that shit, that shit happened. See, like I said, as a parent and being divorced, I've been through that. I I had that Kanye said where I felt everybody was against me yeah. and motherfuckers. You feel me? Like niggas didn't really fuck with me, but I had to realize like my kids don't care about that shit. Exactly. You Their kids don't care about this shit I'm feeling right now. Feel That's about personal you. shit. Exactly. You feel know me? My kids know I'm there for them. I do whatever for them. And if they need me to pick up the fucking phone, we could talk about anything mm-hmm. or whatever. That's all I care about. Anybody else's opinion on me in my situation don't matter. Facts. And like I said, it's a mental it's a mental thing. So if him not like, if nobody's telling him to go to therapy, go seek help, you gotta go talk about this healthy, nigga. True. You posting on social media every time you feel some type of way is not healthy. True. And why would and as a woman, why would you want your kid around that? You don't know what this it's nigga saying when you're not around. I mean, yeah, we 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 already know yeah, Kanye has a lot of, of issues that he has to deal me? with personally and uh it's it's sad to see that a lot of it gets brought to the public light, but I mean it comes comes kind of comes with the territory as is, but hey, could definitely just need a little more self awareness. But hey. man, it uh, is I'll what it is. For my man. Right, it right. is what it is. I um, really do. Speaking, uh, speaking of a, a say, great, for real. a great, great musician, let's talk about some new music. Um, what's been what's been on y'all playlist as of lately? Has it been some new school, some old school? Has it just been kind of the homies, the the main people in the good company camp? What's been on your playlist lately? I've been like I said, I've been slapping. Shit, some old currency. I've been di- dived into some old R and B lately. Old currency, what? Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm trying to catch. I'm trying to catch up on some stuff. Right. Uh, I've been in my R and B back. She knew Wiz Khalifa before he was famous. Uh, look, I, talk I about fuck it. with currency though. I fuck with yeah. currency. Most people that out here don't fuck with currency. Yeah, I was I was weird. a Wiz kid in high school. I was all Wiz like for sure. But then uh, as I got older, I understood currency a little more. So I fuck with a lot more currency nowadays. But yeah, I remember the days there was nobody at the you know at the concerts and we, they was on the couch playing video games. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's <laughs> Shit go crazy. I remember those days. That's hella crazy. Mm-hmm. But well, mostly, like on his playlist, every time we get in the car, it's LaRussell. Then come on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> talk about it. It's, but, it's, but that man is like, he just dropped a new album like every fucking day. Right. So he's, not, he's, he's not like he's I'm dropping just listening to the same. Yeah. The time. Yeah. Yeah. Come out with something new. So we say new music. Day. It's like, it's definitely LaRussell. He, right. he dropped a new goddamn Facts. album every I mean, week. I've been slapping <laughs> that, uh, that eight pounds, two ounces. Yeah, that, that's been my shit as of recent for man, sure from LaRussell. I haven't even made it through all the albums. Yeah, oh no, I have not at all. I'm just letting that one play until I'm satisfied and I move on. So. That yeah. Zaps right. and Alpine, the one he made with Don Bailey. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, that's my that's shit. That's, shit. that's my that's shit. Smart. I like his turn up yeah. shit more yeah. than, than, Same, more than yeah. anything. That turn up shit. It just reminds me. I'm hyphy at heart too. Yeah, so, yeah. Come on, I'm man. You know, heart, yeah. you know, Vallejo <laughs> right. kids. This is sinners. We this is all we know. Mm-hmm. So like, I growing up with Mac Dre, listening to Mac Dre, and listening to E40 like that, and listening to all the shit I listen to. When I hear that shit, it just make me feel like that shit never went nowhere. Facts. It's only got better. Fact, I've been slapping a lot of. Uh, I've seen some. I think I don't know if it's Thizzle or some Twitter page has been saying. uh uh, Jack History Month. You feel oh, like yeah, Jack? Yeah. So I've been slapping a lot of Jacka too. I ain't gonna lie, yeah, I've been slapping this, a lot of Jacka. They, the, they dropped all the little clips they got with yeah. the, uh, the the Jack. I think yeah, that was shout out Jack this. History Month. I've been definitely going to uh, really just some old school uh, Bay Area hip hop, honestly too, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So that's been major. Um, 
Switching gears, movies or TV, which I've been watching lately. Shit, Has everything. I Power, love, Euphoria, Snowfall. I stopped watching Euphoria when it was when the dick to pussy ratio got out of control. <laughs> that's, that's what is Aaron, that why when, we haven't watched it? That, you can watch it, but every time I turn on Euphoria, oh it's God. six dicks been, to every been, titty. I've been, I've been hearing that. I don't watch Euphoria, so I haven't. I, I watched the what, first season. Twitter just rips it every Sunday. It sounds like some real sexy shit going on right now. Nah. Okay. You can't handle a little dicks? Like, <laughs> nah, I can't. You can't handle a couple I'm dicks? Like, to penis. You know how often us women have had to watch fucking titties and like on screen and it's, everything we fuck? Every scary a, movie a has standard. titties. Every yeah. single fucking scary movie has titties in it. Yeah. Hey, be like Whether I it be, be dead you, titties or not, it's titties, titties in every fucking scary movie. <laughs> like, we've had to sit through that shit. Y'all can't sit through some dicks. No. Nope. It's a good show. Like, nope. it's worth the dicks. Nah. <laughs> Nah, I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Uh, I mean, hey, right. it is. I, I mean, at, sorry, at, the end, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there ha always has been a stu double standard in media as far as women being objectified as you know sexual beings or objects. Facts. Um, and now it's just, I just don't want it to be. My personal thing is just don't push the all the excuse me like all the homo homophobic stuff to the forefront to try to like downplay that other stuff because i feel like nowadays in a lot of media there's always ha there's like has to be a gay character or has to be a person doing so or bus bisexual character and it's like no there doesn't have to be i understand shedding that light and representation and all that i really right. do but it's like i don't feel like it should be forced and i'm not saying in that aspect like i said i'm not exactly i want to see a whole bunch of dicks and shit but like i said for years and i agree with z we see a whole bunch of ass and titties all the time they're just trying to balance it out I don't like it because like, exactly it's a double standard. I'd rather see titties and ass more than fucking genitals. That's just me too. But hey, it's there is a double just standard. Just like society we had to do it. though, you know, if you don't want to see the titties, just look away for a second. Facts. If you don't want to see the dick, look away for a second. And I, exactly, that's what exactly like if you watch Euphoria, you, you know the dick coming, nigga. Just you might watch. <laughs> you know, I ain't gonna coming. lie, you don't you know, be know, you know it. Do be kind of surprising. Right. It hey, surprised me when I was first watch, when we first started just, the season. I was like, oh, just carrots and potatoes right, right there, bam, popping out. At least you know when the titties coming out. You, you see the chick, you know, going like Getting this. Getting right back to you. They just cut, 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 you feel me? I've That's because we've had to deal with it though, like forever. Yeah, that, it's, that's exactly. Why. It's the society. You don't it's a societal that, norm. That's, right. that's you gonna sit up here and tell me if you seen some titties but, but on that, the TV? It's no, he's a, he's I'm talking to her personally. <laughs> You're being specific because I'm bisexual. That's not fair. There you go. Just because I'm bisexual don't mean I always want to see titties. But like, it's a double standard in in, in public. Exactly. I'm like all titties. If you damn. see if you see a girl who's <laughs> acting up oh, in a restaurant, so you discriminating against titties, huh? Or trying to go titty? You got a titty preference, huh? Titties is titties. You see them people. Not like people who trying to go viral in a bitch with short titties in a restaurant. Like, ah, uh, 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 that's, that's retarded. That's that, just that, retarded. That would be that happens way more often. It's not as bad if a nigga pulled his dick and balls. Oh yeah, he out. going to jail. Like that. That's like, like, somebody like, like, jail. A, a female, you, she might get banned from the store. Maybe, ma'am, you got to leave. Right. You feel right. me? Somebody, but somebody a white lady gonna be like, I go and, and fucking whip my meat out. Like, oh yeah, I'm getting. The, oh, you're going to jail. I'm, I'm getting shot. Damn near. Like this yeah. is crazy. But hey, it's a yeah, double standard. Yeah, you might get shot. Yeah, exactly. A white man will go to jail. A white man gonna go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, no, that that's real though. So yeah, Euphoria has been just having social media on the, in a fucking chokehold every weekend. Man, um, With power though, <laughs> power been going crazy. I heard Tommy got a new book, or they got a new chapter with Tommy coming cool. out. So his shit cool. Um, I, I, I haven't really been episodes. on it. So it's yeah, solid. It's two of It's cool. Okay, okay. It's, cool. it's just Tommy. It is. Tommy, just Tommy is not a good main character to me. Word. Like, no, no, like well. I'm watching it. I really watch movies and shows. So nigga, this is a subject yeah. I can really get into, and I got an opinion. I don't give a fuck what nobody. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, nigga, my opinion and and this shit matters but uh nigga i just don't think he's a good main character like yeah the the females they got around him might pick it up but as far as him i might not stick with it i feel it i feel far, it but it also could be versus tyreek you're so used to seeing him as being the number two role no, though so now he's in his I number see one that nigga role in hella shit. like i watch like i said i watch tv i see yeah. him in hella shit he's yeah. never he's never played a main role and okay. if it is it's a b movie i'm not knocking him in his yeah, acting yeah, yeah. Chops. he getting his bread and all that facts but that's I'm just a reality. my opinion i gotta i feel like i gotta say that because people on the internet be like, oh you hate no no I'm man not. don't I'm just worry straight man my we opinion. ain't, we ain't like, worried about the haters man haters gonna hate i kind of understand what you're saying though because as i'm watching it i like the show but if to think of it in that perspective, I guess 
when they introduce like I don't remember I don't know their names yet, but you know like the the dude from the barbershop mm-hmm. and his brother. Mm-hmm. Like when they brought them into the show, it made it better. But also, I think you pay a lot of attention to them too. Like so, not like ghosts, so it was, where it was, it was like more, you paid the, attention the, the to ghosts. Characters like you were the focus. Ghosts. Or are you saying like the kind of the supporting cast is the, the strength supporting of that cast show. Yeah. strengthening That's the strength. it because okay. yeah. it's a good show. It's a good. It is a good show. A good show. Mm-hmm. But I think yeah, the supporting the supporting characters are. That's real. Are and my, and my real problem now that I'm thinking about it is his lines in the show. You know how in Power he had like quick witty. Mm, yeah, shit to say, and he's always putting niggas up on game, and you know he yeah. knew the game. That's the only time he you're ever right, talking. Right. He can talk about the game. That's that's how it is in the show. He don't. If somebody having a conversation with this nigga, he got one liners and shit. He got quick ass fucking. He's trying. He like the funny guy now. Yeah, well, not like the funny guy. Like he just he's he got that sidekick. Like somebody's writing a script, like he's still a sidekick. Instead I was of just gonna like say, you want him role. to talk more. I want, yeah, I want, want him to talk more. His yeah. dialogue. Like, oh yeah, you like, want more like, dialogue. Yeah, I got Jeb. Like nigga, it's basic. Make him it's seem like, like the main character. Yeah, are the main seem character. Like, the nigga. Yeah. like if you come into the city to be the nigga, why is you? So what he say? Something. I, if you, that was like I was just watching the episode. It's like if you don't do something, we gonna kill you. He's like, don't make promises you can't keep. Yeah. Like nigga. You didn't even have to say nothing right, right there. Yeah. Like, I come got on, you. bro. I got like, you. They kind of cheesing him up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like, you. bro. Like, and then he had a scene with the uh, they, the, the dude, like she was saying, from the barbershop. He a brother. Mm-hmm. He was driving, and the police pulled him over and started tripping on him. Mm-hmm. But Tommy's right. in there doing his business. He came out and was like, oh, what's, what's the problem? And you feel me? And then he was like, he wasn't even like, it wasn't no real dialogue there. He could have, he really could have got at bro. His bro, yeah. whole attitude, demeanor. He's been, a, he drew down on this nigga and everything. Yeah. His whole demeanor changed when Tommy walked out. He could have played that to his advantage. You've been grown up around black people. You in the game, right? Nigga, I would have went off on that cop. You okay. feel me? He was just like, yeah, bro. Da, da, da. But I, I did it. have somewhere to I go. I see it. Hopefully, hopefully, like based off what you said, and I haven't really seen it, but hopefully they do a better job of like developing his character into a main character or more of that yeah. alpha, more alpha more of presence. Yeah. Maybe at the end of yeah, the more it's not bad. Yeah. It's got enough. And, and to maybe, it. And maybe to that's work. what it is. They just trying to like start it yeah. kind of build, and build it up so he so you don't like so, find his way through yeah, okay. that. And then maybe you don't get lost in like this ain't Tommy. This ain't the time. You yeah, because they brought the character, they brought the the bitch back from the um this the show the show the first, with ghosts yeah i don't know who she one. is though I, I remember her ghost paid her off to leave and all that shit is there and one that was gonna kill lala no nah, the, 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 the person that's gonna kill in the first episode i remember? think so i think that i think so and then he gave her the I money i can't remember exactly i remember her face though when she came on screen i was like i remember her uh, i don't remember her, okay okay but they're trying to still keep that like Tommy, like it's still Tommy. It's still Tommy. You know yeah, I mean? keep like keep that same yeah, universe. Keep, keep like, it, keep it all integrated. So just maybe stuff. they didn't want to just like dive right into hella dialogue because people yeah. would probably be like, "What the That's fuck?" What I'm this saying. Ain't That's Tommy. what I said. Yeah, this yeah, they, ain't Tommy. They, you know, and and niggas, probably want to grow. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we trust the producers and see see what the director got. Yeah, I, I trust them. So, yeah. Fifty Cent did his thing with the. It's enough there. It's enough there. Oh yeah, it's it's so many other stories to be told and the characters they introduced. They at least got three seasons out this year. Okay, just based on the the characters they got right now and Tommy. And yeah. whatever he doing in Chicago. Yeah. But right. as far as it's like that whole universe, the BMF, the Kane, mm-hmm. the Kanan, that's a, I like that one. Mm-hmm. The fucking, the one with Tyreek, nigga, that's, that's yeah. I think that's better than the original. I heard that was Go. cool. I, yeah, I heard that one's cool, so. Okay. I, 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 yeah, that one's, nigga, you, you got sure. a podcast, you don't watch this shit? I, I, I but I right. be watching Abbott Elementary and Lego Masters. Woo, like, nigga, I watch, I love I watch Abbott. Abbott, yeah, Abbott, 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 Abbott Elementary, right that, that's I been my shit. Abbott. I used to want to be a teacher, so Word? when I first seen that show, I was like, this shit. That shit is hilarious. This shit is hella funny. The principal, she the, she the, she funny. the funniest she, motherfucker. She be annoying she's me. Hella she funny. annoying me, but she hella funny. She hella she's funny. She's hella, hella funny. funny. You got, she got a stand up. She, she got a special. Somebody, yeah. yeah, somebody just told I gotta hella go watch it. I gotta Netflix. go watch it on Netflix. It's, it's called, uh, what's, the, what's that shit called? Stand I honestly up? don't even remember. I don't know. Now. I got, yeah. Nisi just told me about it. I gotta yeah, go, I gotta go keep game more. Yeah, she is. She's hella funny. Awesome. But yes, keeping it moving from current events, talk a little bit of sports talk. Uh, All Star Weekend is around the corner. We'll we'll start off with some NBA. Um, we had that big trade that happened with James Harden and Ben Simmons. Easy. I don't know if you're a big hoop fan. Do you have a favorite team? Look, so I stopped watching sports in like 2016, but I was I grew up playing every sport. What? I have four brothers, no sisters. I yeah. watched sports my whole life, mm. but currently I don't really watch sports like the that. I started cool watching athlete, football because yeah. of him. Okay, okay. I started watching more football because of him, but he a Raiders fan, and I mm. grew up a Cowboys fan, so that was interesting. Yeah, that, that don't never mix. It was right, interesting. You grew up a loser, yeah. but I don't. You know, I got mixed feelings about the Cowboys now, so it's I like feel it, I, feel it. I I was rooting for them for just for him because okay. it's like you know if he has a bad day, I got. 
had a okay. bad day. So. You, got, you got a hoop squad, hoop team, nobody? I, so I'm a Sixers fan. Nice. So, okay. so see, we're perfectly <laughs> talking about this trade. She don't, even, she don't know nothing about this trade. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but I, don't, I haven't been caught out. I don't watch fucking okay. ESPN no more, okay. which let is me, let me usually just, how you learn everything. Let me everything. ask you this. Thing. Okay, so do you know Joel Embiid? You know who that is? Yes. Okay. You know who James Harden is? Yes. Okay. So now y'all, you got both of them on your team as a Sixer fan. How okay. do y'all think y'all going to do? I'm going to just say Joel Embiid is playing I don't know very the rest good. of the team, but <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> she like, shit, we'll take it. She like, we're going to do something. Sounds good. Shit. Right. Sound good. It's all if good. If we're talking about it, it must mean something. Yeah, oh, yeah. See, I mean, shit. It's, it's definitely a major move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely a major move for sure. I just know um, when I was watching sports, my team wasn't doing that great. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Philly, y'all, y'all good though. Y'all got, y'all got a cool squad. Y'all got a cool squad. So, um, but let's since y'all know more football, let's talk about football real quick. Um, Tom Brady just retired. What the finally. fuck? Like it was a fumble, nigga. Finally, end of an era. It was a fumble, nigga. It was the end of an era. As a Raider fan, that's all I got to say about 2003? that. Yeah, yep, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. oh my god, he's bitter. bitter. Oh my god, he went back to the Tuck rule. I'm dead. Right. It was a fumble, nigga. It was a fumble. <laughs> what yeah. fumble, nigga? That was a fucking fumble. If I ever uh, meet Tom Brady, that's the only thing I want to say. That I don't give a fuck. I'm famous or not, nigga. It's a fumble. Let me get nigga. a picture, nigga. That was a fumble. Nah, <laughs> fuck the picture, nigga. It was. A, I might just record a video. It's a fumble, nigga. It's but a, man, that was that was definitely end of the era. Hey, you laughing? But that was a thirty for thirty, man. That's a that's a that's a highly debated motherfucking. Uh, play the most Facts. debated play in NFL history, nigga. It changed the course of uh, two franchises in a whole fucking conference, nigga. I don't give a fuck what you say, nigga. I can take it back to 2003. <laughs> I'm about to say he's bitter on that one. He, nigga. Let me stop. Nigga. Let me stop nah. talking about Brady. You know what's cold, you know cold about that? About Brady for his man, Papa Blood. No, no, nah, you know what's cold about that? I, I was never, I grew up around women. And my great granny raised me, so I was never into sports. So when I moved to Louisiana, <laughs> my my uh, best friend dad was like, we was hella cool, and his dad was like hella nice to me and shit. So I think they when we went, when I first started watching football, they was all Raider fans because they yeah. was from L.A. Yeah, and I was from I was from the Bay, and they was from Oakland yeah. at the time. So I was right. like, nigga, I don't know nothing else. You're right, you know, so my, that's my, my that's whole my squad. Was Niners fans, but it didn't register to me because I didn't have no bond with nobody watching sports. Yeah. But them and the people I grew, you know, sports is like you you develop teams and relationships on sports based on the bond you have with people. Yeah. So a people, lot of people, people are, get at me. I'm a I'm a Bay Area raised Knicks and Charger fan. Like, but I get bro, all the flack in the world. Yeah, 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 I get niggas all the flack in the world. People, people be like, what is wrong with you? Exactly. Are you adopted? Yeah, for real, for real. They hit you with anything. Right. His mom. Him and his mom be cracking me up because yeah. he a Raiders fan and she a Niners, Niners fan. Yeah, we, 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 we that's my best hilarious. friend. We, we be beefing, nigga. Like, we blood. be beefing. Like, as soon as the season starts, preseason, yeah. nigga, we on the phone talking shit. Like, that's nigga, y'all weak, y'all hella weak. Yeah, she, she, call she calling every day until they until they lost. Literally. <laughs> Literally. She called me. She didn't call that day. day. He had to call her. Right. I, I called her the last uh, minute. Like, nigga, what's going on? Gotta go. She was quiet as shit. I think my breath through that pick. I called her. I was like, what happened? Yeah. It was over. That was your only chance, Ooh. nigga. It's over. I was like, you gonna watch these kneel downs with me, motherfucker. Y'all hella she funny. Was and I, I, I ain't heard. never heard her quiet. She was quiet. Like, when he first called, like, she, I ain't just never heard her quiet. Yeah, all my life. She was just kind of, you know, not saying got, nothing. Got, he got started talking mama. shit. But yeah, that was shit. hilarious. Um, that was yeah, hilarious. She that's called me as soon as the Raiders lost to the Bengals. People don't play about their squads, man. Especially being from the Bay Area, like, the Bay fucks with the Bay just heavily with a yeah, lot of part period. of our culture. We so proud. our teams, like that's why I get. I feel like if I was a if I lived in Tennessee and was a Falcons fan, like that's one thing. But if you're from the Bay and you don't have a Bay Area team, you, you look you're a fucking alien. Oh, you said a Knicks fan. You're I, not I'm even not a Warriors bro, fan. I, I everybody looks at me like an alien. They be like you. you Really from Vallejo? They be like, you sure? What? You sure? You don't Bruh. fuck with the Warriors? I do. Like, of course, nigga, I, know I want them to nigga, succeed. I, I worked but... the parade. I was the security at the yeah, second nah, parade. Like, nigga, I'm I'm, I'm, to I'm, win. Like, of course, I'm 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 Bay Area before a lot of shit, but. It's just certain things like me personally. I cannot. I, I would root for the Raiders over the Niners. That's me. Even in a just for certain reasons. For one, the only time the Chargers ever been to the Super Bowl, fucking got demolished by Joe Montana and everybody. That <laughs> fucking <laughs> Niners put up big numbers in '95. Y'all was born. It was horrible. Beef. Yeah, I got personal beef with the Niners. Yeah, that's that's just personal. Got personal. I got um, personal beef with the Niners too. Yeah. So, but but that's just what it is. Um, but yes, who y'all got in the big game today? Super Bowl Sunday. We got. L.A. Rams, Cincinnati Bengals. We got Joe Shiesty, Joe Burr, Joe Burrow taking on Matthew Stafford. Hey, my nigga Joe vet. Burrow is living a Madden. This friend, nigga, uh, bro, uh, my nigga's living a Madden creative player. Yeah, oh yeah, dream right there. Yeah. Nigga's real life. Nigga, that's some shit you do on Madden. Nigga. Second year coming Second off an year? ace, a catastrophic leg injury. Right, and you going um, to the Super Bowl? First year what? starting. Your coach is damn near on the hot seat. Right, finna get fired. 
The whole but, this yeah. is gonna be a whole overhaul because you got injured and you them got niggas, all the, them niggas all the house money. You got all the young talent. You got Jamar Chase, rookie of the year. Right, your number Balling. one receiver from when you won a chip. You, you got be, Joe you. Mixon in the backfield. All of their main pieces on offense are like 25 years and younger. Then on the other side of the ball, you got the hey, Rams. Joe Mixon is a boy. Yeah, I, th- I want to say he's from the uh, he Bay, He's from the Bay. Yeah, I want to say he's from doing the Bay. Because he be doing the big step and shit. Yeah. He, he, I, I, I think he, he went to one of Marshawn Lynch little that. camps. I see yeah. that. When he, when he did that shit Shout on us, I was Mixon. mad yeah, That's why I'm like, I love it, I love it. You ain't supposed to be doing us like that. Yeah. But it is. It is what it is. that bad. The other side, you got the LA Rams. They got Odell over there. They got Stafford. Yes, you got LA. You think the Rams don't take it? I got they don't take it because it's like, it's too many niggas on that team. It's a lot of fucking talent. too many You got Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald. It's just too hard. It's too many Cooper homie Cup. niggas. It's like you look at the Bengals. You like you niggas gonna be here for a while. You think you so? Niggas, yeah. You niggas yeah, that's gonna, the feeling. Just because you made it here right now, your franchise is gonna. You these niggas haven't been to nothing like this in thirty three years. If y'all get blown the fuck out, your franchise is gonna break you niggas off. Yeah. They finna. Yeah. They they gonna give your coach one more he, year. He already didn't change the culture already. Yeah. He already niggas, didn't change the culture. Niggas are winners. The Bengals. When have you ever mentioned the Bengals? I'm like, yeah, they going to the chip this year. Yeah, not not they, not them, a while. Them, them not since niggas. Carson and Ocho Cinco. Now it's not even that much noise. That might so. be enough to make them really want to win, though. Because we all know but, sometimes it's it's but, not just your skill yeah. set, though. And, it's like and, people choke and shit. You see the Cowboys. And choke we're every talking. Fucking and, year. We're talking like this well, as fans. <laughs> we're talking like this as fans. Of course, they gonna want to win it because they. You might not be back. Think about it, like right, the, right, right. That, 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 okay, that, that OKC team back in I'll, the day when they played the Heat. We thought they were going to be back in the finals. Felt they that we never seen that team ever return. So well, same thing for them. People they, think they just because y'all young, it. think just because they young, shit. That's a dysfunctional franchise too. Just because they young and got talent, don't mean that they gonna all stay and don't mean they gonna young all minds are bring easier it back. to break. Mm. That's, it's, it's not that easy. There's a lot of teams you're gonna be like, oh, they're gonna be back. They're gonna be back. Just the fact that they held their own against Kansas City. Twice. 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 Nigga, like, Twice. nigga, nigga, you, you gotta have a mindset to go against a great nigga. Like, oh. to beat a great nigga, you, had, you gotta you, realize Eli Manning had You gotta be great. Not only, you just had to have that mindset, like, nigga, I'm gonna be right. Everything I'm gonna do is yeah. right. I'm not gonna fuck up today, because yeah. at the end of the day, that's all you gotta do. Yeah. When you face a certain nigga, like, that's all, that, that shit with, like, Tom Brady losing them two Super Bowls, nigga, was a fluke. Nigga, it was mental. But him winning one or two of them was also awesome. could have been a fluke. But I hey, mean, that's, a debatable. that's debatable. That's debatable. <laughs> that's debatable. Don't, don't get me started. That's debatable. Nigga. I can but, name him. But in general, yeah, um, Joe Burrow definitely is going to have a lot more opportunities oh, yeah. to go back. Matthew but he also Stafford. he also got a tougher tougher road because the AFC is just harder. A lot more better quarterbacks. You got yeah. Lamar Jackson. You got Patrick Mahomes. Right. Josh Allen. Right. Shit, Justin Herbert for the Chargers. You got shit. Yeah, um, a lot of motherfuckers. Boy. Yeah, yeah. About to say, yeah, you got a lot of motherfuckers in over there. So, but. LA, LA, who you got, Z? You going you go LA? I want I want the Bengals to win for my pops. Shout gotcha. out Pops. Because uh, they he, he, he that's his that's his, he liked the Cowboys too, but that was always his other team. That's the Cowboys slap. and the Bengals were playing when the day I was born. So what? like okay. Yeah, so I want them to win just for him. But nice. also, you know, I feel kind of bad because that's a team that took his team out. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. I was, yeah. But, but for won. pops, I do want, I do want. Because I can be like, well, at least we lost to the right, Super Bowl champions. Right, at least we lost to the Super Bowl yeah. champions. Yeah. yeah, the fucking Cowboys lost to the Niners. So yeah. right, <laughs> you know? right, right. You know, so we Factual. ain't gonna talk about them this Factual. year. But I hope they win for pops because he ain't seen the Bengals make it to the fucking right. Super Bowl. And I don't know how many years you said they made it. They they that, they, they already overachieved. Yeah, yeah. they're mad to be they're stupid up. to not get them niggas locked in. Yeah. Like, I'm dropping oh, yeah. bags on everybody oh, yeah. that they're, has they're, something yeah. to do with anything. They got a good core that they definitely yeah, need to secure they need for the to, future. They need to grab them niggas up. Um, and niggas then is going before we get into the two entities that y'all are as the great up and coming, beautiful, entertaining entertainers that y'all are. Let me get y'all NBA finals pick since we we're All Star weekend. You got y'all got Warriors going all the way. Y'all got the Suns. All the way. Uh, all in the, the west, way. all the way. I, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards Phoenix, but I'll all give you that way. one. I'll give you that one. All the way. Um, you should have seen Clay. He just dropped 33. Yeah, he just, he just, he's back. Yeah, yeah he just, <laughs> he just dropped back. some numbers. He just dropped some numbers. Drake coming back. My after brother the would kill me, break. but I always say the Suns because I've yeah. just been a personal fan of the Suns, like yeah. since I was a kid. That I, I mean, I'm a Sixers fan, mm-hmm. but I used to cheer and dance, and we got to like meet the. We got to meet the Kings and the Suns, and yeah. this personally, it don't even have nothing to do with basketball. Right? They they touched me in a way. Okay, that sounded bad. <laughs> they didn't touch me. All right, they emotionally right. They, touched they, me. They, they no inspired. I want them to, want them to have to win. They inspired all. you. Yes, yes. I want yes. them to have to win. That's all. They was a dope ass team. The people they was respectful mm-hmm. to us and all that shit. The the Kings players. I ain't gonna lie, because yeah. I'm I live in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. I'm not from Sacramento, but I live in Sacramento. I've mm-hmm. lived there for many years now. But yeah, the Kings players they was assholes, and we were in Sacramento. Yeah. So that shit was kind of 
like they were the ones that invited us to even right. perform and that shit kind of right. fucked me up but yeah so I, I i would want them to win but my brother would kill me he's like a diehard warriors fan yeah. like okay, he, okay. <laughs> yeah, wrong with you worry about the wrong person uh, yeah. uh, okay let me let me ask you about the eastern, right. con- eastern conference then who y'all think gonna come out the eastern uh, we got miami they looking pretty good the heat uh, milwaukee bucks still there you know with Giannis. Um, we got Chicago. DeMar DeRozan been doing some shit. I, so I, I hope for Chicago because I fuck with Chicago. And then Brooklyn and is still up DeMar. there. You still got Brooklyn Nets with KD and now Ben Ben Ten Ben Simmons. He going wear number ten, so that's kind of cool. What the what the fuck is Ben Tim Ben Simmons gonna do? <laughs> hey, I mean shit. That's a body. I don't even know basketball. And I know this nigga. He shouldn't be great, on nobody's great, great, great defender. Only thing he can't do is shoot. Everything else he can do. That's all you need to know. He's only he just can't shoot. Which that's in like, basketball you kind of need to know how to do because that's, like, that's, that's a point of scoring. I was about to say. I was about to say. I was yeah. like said a nigga good at baseball, but he can't hit home runs. Yeah, I'm, hey, but if I'm he, Michael, pitch his ass off, or he might be a good first baseman. Bro can right. defend, and he got very elite talent. But right, hey. that's not gonna get the points on the board, so we can get where that, we need to go. That's what they got KD for. I mean, I they can got KD shoot, for that. but I'm not like they I'm not good at defense. Yeah. I can shoot, but I'm not right, a great well, basketball that's, that's, player. Put me on the court, like, nigga, because I can do everything <laughs> that nigga can do and not shoot. Why well, I ain't got an NBA contract? I'm six four. You feel me? I can put on extra true. five pounds. Very like true. if no one's around me, I'll make every shot. <laughs> I mean, I'm really stupid. good at shooting, <laughs> but stupid. shit, my short ass will get bapped all day. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. All right, let's let's get into the the real reason we have y'all here on the podcast today because we got to talk about when Lance became Lancey Bo and why ZZ is called ZZ because <laughs> y'all out here put, putting in work. Uh, I've been seeing y'all. Um, I see with the merch on the something funny. Did y'all want to let, let, let's yes, start off talking about that? Funny. Yeah, Z, come on. Uh, let, let the people know what this something funny is uh, about to show them. Well, I, you know, what's really interesting is um, I am a, I'm a music journalist. So I wow. come from the music industry. That's nice. actually how I know La Russell, how I know this fool. Like, mm-hmm. this, and he, I met him at um i was doing one of my dance classes because i dance as well and that's when we like first met but um because i was doing one of the wrestle songs and the nice. wrestle came through and filmed it and all hell that yeah stuff. hell yeah but what really happened was he was doing his first show and uh in the wrestle's backyard yeah yeah and he just kind of knew he knew of me like what i do and i used to manage some artists and stuff like that mm-hmm. and uh he was walking around that whole day telling people i was his manager Ah, <laughs> it smooth. was his first comedy smooth. show his first comedy show and smooth. uh he was just walking around telling people that like um i think it was uh wasn't it Bree that said yeah. that she was like yeah. yeah he told me you was his manager before he even told me <laughs> so he was informing people that, that i was his manager <laughs> before i knew i was his manager so anyways um but i asked him that day i said you know are you serious though like if you're serious mm. i i don't know nothing about the comedy world right Shit, but i didn't <laughs> but i didn't know nothing about the music industry until i was in it right, so right. i was like shit i'll I'm like just as long as you know i don't know shit we're gonna learn this shit together but i got my other skill sets you know networking yeah. and stuff like that and for sure I'll, I'll, she I'll might not you. know comedy but she know everybody in sacramento <laughs> like, well, i say she, yeah you know you know that your voice <laughs> can be applied there yeah. right 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 and so that's how that's how i got into like the comedy world with him and then as i was just there there was a couple times i was just like oh so like comedy is like music people just mm-hmm. go up there and vent so i got up a couple times mm-hmm. for you know just to vent or whatever but then i got the idea i started sitting there thinking like this is hella crazy because there is no platform out here Man. for comedians like like we have for music i mean there's barely even in in, in northern california yeah. you know platforms why la russell started what he did and right. you know um and i was just sitting there like literally nothing there is no there's no there's no laugh factory out here there's, right. you know what i'm saying right there's comedy clubs but there is no platform yeah. so i was like look we need to just start this platform because um i'm noticing more comedians like I respect the game though, right? Once you get into it, you got to learn the language, you got to learn everything about it. And mm-hmm. that's what I started to do. And one, one thing I do understand though is that most comedians, like back in the day, they didn't like to be recorded. That's you. Ooh, most yeah, comedy shows true. you go to, you yeah. can't even put your record. Phones up. Put your even phones to this up. day, you can't record in a comedy show. So when we would go to comedy shows to like film his set, mm-hmm. I would always just ask the comedians, like, you want me to, I'm not going to record nobody without their permission, period. Right. right. 
But I started noticing like with the way times are now with social media and shit like that. I think even comedians, even the older comedians, right. they're like, shit, we need these little need 30 a, second yeah. clips, these yeah. little just to bring people to their page or you know what I mean? Bring them to their YouTube just so they can see what they do. Hell yeah. So that's why I was just like, yeah, we need to just we need to create this platform. And so nice. that's really how that started. Something and then I couldn't funny. think of a name. And then I was just like, it's got to be something funny. Yeah, and then I was like, "Oh shit, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Now that's that's, it. that's super that's dope. It. <laughs> that's super dope. Um, super glad to hear it. And I feel like you guys are doing it the right way. Y'all have a, a lot of good influences around y'all with good company and stuff like that. Because with a, a person you could learn from, also building, literally building the platform in a different space, Facts. which is not very known or exposed to. But a lot of people." Who we grow up are our class clowns, our comedians just naturally. Like right, you've been right, a funny guy, right. I've been a funny guy. Like we know <laughs> right. I can name eight motherfuckers I went to school with who you'd be like, hilarious. hilarious. Who, He's like annoyingly funny. Yeah, I'm like, like and who you never know <laughs> with now who you would never know with a platform, <laughs> you can have them take that serious and craft that into an actual mm-hmm. profession and a career. So I just that's think, funny you say that because a lot of people have been uh it's hella funny. Cause a lot of people have been hitting me like I went to school with like oh I've been wanting to get into comedy yeah. how you get into comedy and I'm like I just got into just it do like, it bro. I just got just into do it. it you just do I it I tried the social media shit and the different apps and shit and it's just like it wouldn't it didn't hit and it wasn't like it wasn't for me and it was it's like, a resource yeah it's a, it's a it's resource a, it's an but, ally but yeah. I like I've watched comedy from like nigga from a little nigga like we've been like, watching comedy you feel me like comedy though Man. like, like stand ups and wilding out and the Chappelle mm-hmm. show and in living color and saturday from night sk- exactly skit shows you to stand up yeah, comic view. south park yeah. Yeah. comic view nigga Talk when i seen real. when i seen jj on comic jj view, on nigga, comic view i remember I'm watching like, my mom's what but i was like bro what this nigga's on comic view a, y- a youngin showing you exactly right. black and youngin doing it. the killing it and then killing it getting his own show doing all of that right everything bro i was like what the fuck and then like niggas like like people don't un- understand how influential Nick Cannon like is as a comedian like for that real? nigga's really a comedian for real like, he do so much shit and he's, he's a hilarious. mogul now but he started off as a fucking comedian for real you for feel real. me and he looks out for comedians like that's why I fuck with Lou in his room in Oakland because he everybody think he started on social media right Lou was in the trenches. Yeah. Right after high school, doing stand up. Yeah, you feel me? When I met him, he was like, "Yeah, bro, I'm I got I got my social media shit hit. I was never into it to be a social media comedian. Yeah. That shit just took off. Yeah, because I was funny. Helped. Yeah, right. And I was like, okay, I, I get what you're saying because you are funny, and I did start following you from when you from was making socials. Yeah, yeah, from the from, from the Sonny Bow and all that. Bo, yeah, all that shit. But he was like, nah, nigga, because I, I told him I, I was doing my comedy shit in SAC. It's a place called Touch of Class. It's been around for like 15 years. Mm-hmm. It's like a NorCal black comedy staple. But NorCal comedy is not like Atlanta comedy or, right, or, right. or Texas comedy or Midwest or New York comedy where these black clubs don't have the repertoire mm-hmm. that they have. But niggas have come. Craven Hart has been through there. Yeah. Tiffany Haddish has been through there. Nice, Nigga, nice. it's niggas that And leave. it's just some funny ass It's some funny that motherfuckers that you like... wouldn't know because they're not on social media. Right. So when she hit me with that idea and that was my, that was my, like I was complaining about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> she came up with a solution for yeah. it. You feel yeah. me? And that's why I was like, nigga, you're my matter. You, like, you <laughs> yeah. You're my number two in this <laughs> shit. You already because, know what to do. You already know. Nigga, it's been years I've been wanting to do comedy and I didn't know nothing about the sack. Just I lived where in to sack. start or just where to go, yeah. where to look. Yeah. I lived in sack since 11th grade year. You mm-hmm. know, last time I we was all kicking it and shit. Facts. And I moved to sack. And I've been wanting to do comedy ever since then. Yeah. And I try to do it on social media. And I've, you know me, I've right. never been a social media type right. of nigga. I've never been like a fit in type of nigga. So yeah. my social media presence never clicks because I was never. That I was, was your always, personality. Yeah, that yeah. was that wasn't me. I was all I was eyeball. Like I'm a yeah. I'm funny, but like I'm like all right. I'm nigga. funny with my homies. Yeah, yeah I'm exactly. funny, and then I'm like I'm funny all the time. Nigga, don't get it twisted. Nah, <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, <laughs> like, nigga, I'm always funny, right? But uh, it gets to the point where when people don't know you, they don't care to listen. Exactly. And that's what social media is. You gotta Dang. get people to know you to listen. Facts. But if you funny, you funny, and that's why we that's why we made the that's why when she came with the platform, I was 100 percent behind it because I was like I know. You being a person you know, knowing a hell of people and posting it, and your social media game is so strong, and you being a like she said, a hip hop journalist with a prominent company in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Rap Shack. Uh, it was easy. It was just like we got the funny niggas, you got the people. We just need them to embrace us when we and making that, that shit, make that and connection. then we can we can build together. Yes, sir. You feel me? Like like 
I'm not tripping out this shit starting off slow. I'm kind of glad it's starting off slow. I didn't want it to blow up. No, yeah, you got to take your time. Yeah, I didn't you want it to blow up grow, too crazy where people progress. expected more out of us than what we could produce at the moment. Right, for real. So I'm like, I'm just, all I'm asking for now is people to just, to, if you see my shit, anybody shit on our page, anybody, my shit, the other mm -hmm. comedians that open up for me, the big names in NorCal comedy that you might not know if you don't go to shows, to share their shit so other people can know them. So when they yeah. share a flyer or follow, like, Follow all that shit because we tag them in it. You know, like good company. We For let you know yeah. who's, who's most definitely who's most in definitely. this clip and who's doing their shit. We Give got people more. People that credit. But Give people that credit. Comedians, I feel like <clears throat> I think people don't understand. I never understood until I got into into the game. They're like comedians, like it's different. Mm -hmm. Like with artists, with music artists, you hear about ten thousand hours in the studio. Right. Like comedians, ten thousand hours is open mics it's in legit. front of live ass audience like y'all i have so much respect for comedians mm -hmm. it's crazy and y'all just think like haha they just joking all day like nah. y'all don't understand like and those when you bomb mm -hmm. it's Ooh. bruh i've seen it's funny because i met we i took him to new york and we that he did like that's kind of crazy because i think you did like your first open mics in new york huh yeah that's what i really because you did because he did his shit. first show mm -hmm. with la Russell, but then we like went to like after that we went, we to, went new to new york, york. Yeah. and yeah. i was just like i went out there for music shit and then mm -hmm. i was like fuck it just come out here i looked up some random open mics and turned out to be a dope ass open mic nice, uh, nice. What, uh, the what, tiny cupboard the in, tiny uh, cupboard Brooklyn? the Isn't tiny cupboard Brooklyn? Yes, it's, it's in, in Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. and actually, like you, they've had people like SNL writers come through there, shit like Hell that. Oh yeah. When we were there, it just so happened. Um, Dan, shit, I can't remember, I can't his, remember last his last name, last name but he's but on this show. What's called the show flat, called? Um, flat, Fla Mr. Mis flat, flat Flatbush Mr. Misdemeanors. It's okay. on Showtime. He, okay, and it's he's like on a, that. Yeah, and, and he's hella funny. And he went up there, and he was talking, and you know, I introduced myself, did my manager shit, mm -hmm. told him about Lance, and and asked him because he was weird. He's so new. I'm so new in the game. Right. I'm trying to. I'm like, what advice do you have for him? Like anything you could tell us. We don't need anything. Um. And he was just telling him, like, you know, keep going. Um, because he he's told me he bombed yeah. for years straight. Like, yeah. like years. I believe okay. it. Can you imagine artists, right? I mean, there are a lot of artists, right, that they, they make music, they put them out. Mm. And after, you know, after a few months, they be like, if this shit ain't hidden, they ready to give up. Like, nobody's listening, so right. why the fuck am I? Right. Like, this man said he was going to open mics and bombing for years. Like, yeah. five years before he fucking really, like, got on that show and blew up and shit. That shit is like, real. Like, that's crazy. That shit but, is real. But it's also, like, that's their 10,000 hours. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's why they in the gym. But you got to think, like, that's hella crazy because when artists, when they essentially, you know, quote, unquote, bomb... It's it's nobody's listening. Right. So when you but as a comedian, you might bomb in a room that full shit of is fucking embarrassing people. Embarrassing publicly. You might Bruh. bomb in a room full of fucking Bruh, that people. Shit hurt your soul, that shit is nigga. embarrassing. Like, and of course you're seeing that you hear about it. Um, but of course, you know, the bigger comedians, you only see the specials and, and, and the good stuff they did, right. and the good work they did, but exactly they don't bring out I promise you they up, had bomb and oh, like, exactly. like, like that, that's you. the struggles of a promise comedian. Promise you Kevin Hart bomb before. Exactly. I promise you. It's a uh, <laughs> public <laughs> embarrassment, public uh kind of just I don't know about David. That motherfucker so. hilarious. I mean, he's been doing that shit since he was 15. So yeah, yeah. Some some people some people do hit the ground running, but then me? again, some people you feel me got got to work. Um, and speak on that too. The preparation behind it now being adjusting from just being a naturally funny nigga who's you know making making the homies laugh to now you got to walk into a room full of strangers that you have no relation to none of them probably grew up from your same city none that, not even ooh, that the same was new york that, exactly being in new york half new these york motherfuckers don't have the same skin color can't relate to half this stuff so how is that preparation walking to a room of strangers and that having shit. to make them laugh that shit when i went to new york i didn't know what the fuck i was getting into i was like uh, I, I bet bro because I, I came off the backyard hot nigga i was my first time everybody right. was he fucking said with i came me. out the backyard yeah hot. Nigga, it I was, was hilarious I, nigga, I was <laughs> on <laughs> fire nigga i felt like I nigga, on top shit. of the world nigga, mm -hmm. I, nigga, you can tell me i wasn't a comedian after that day it was nigga it was the, like you said the homies it's exactly just, it's just more formal because it's like recorded in the mics and shit mm -hmm. nigga i get to new york we 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 do a workshop the first time. You feel me? We in the workshop. It's me and like six other white motherfuckers. Like yeah. you said, I'm the only nigga in there. So yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. as soon as I walk in the room, I'm like, I know before I got here, y'all had some black jokes. So don't <laughs> don't get rid of them black trying to jokes. Facts. I'm trying, trying to lighten the mood. mood. Facts. That turned everybody off. Didn't even Answer. realize it. Them niggas is like, oh, this nigga thinks he's the shit. Right. right. And we not from New York too. So on top of that, York, so like, I don't know how it's they a different rock. type I'm, of humor. I'm trying humor, to bring my, yeah. my player, player, yeah, a little player vibes. They like, nah, they wouldn't feel it. Yeah, they wouldn't feel it. Shit, bro. Shit. 
These niggas. I don't get know up. if they were scared or what. I, 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 I don't know. It so might have been a combination. Like, just a different flavor. Mm. So they was like, oh, woo -dee -woo -woo. they get up there and tell they white jokes. They out of Cabo toast and my mom's Avocado paying for my toast. therapy even though I went to school to have a PhD. <laughs> nigga, I can't relate to nothing. My shit is simple. For nigga, real? I'm talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about your weird ass mayor. I'm talking about your weird ass governor. Nigga, I'm talking about talking just, about weed and right. white women with fat asses. Right. Like, what the I'm fuck? talking about bullshit. <laughs> These niggas talking about seeking like talking about they like like just like nigga. Like, you didn't know go to it was therapy. gonna be like, that much like, of a culture shock because we were in yeah. Brooklyn still. Yeah, yeah. we were in Brooklyn. So we were kind of shocked at the we right. were like, hmm. There's a bodega down the street. This niggas hanging out. <laughs> like this is the skill. Right. Like, nigga, I didn't know we was gonna get gang raped, robbed, or nothing walking <laughs> up these rickety ass stairs going yeah. to this building. New and York it was, just, was interesting. Stupid. And it was just these white people in a room from all over the place just talking about white situations. Right. And I was like, it right. was it was so interesting. I didn't expect it either. But I told him I was like, you needed that. For real? You needed yeah, that. I did. To have yeah. that. And like, that's when I learned the essence of reading the room. You have to know your audience you reading the room. I came there thinking what I had to say was important and it wasn't. Sitting in not that room. Not to them. Yeah, not to them. <laughs> right. Hey, what the fuck? And that's, that's an, a, an, a, a thing you have to do in preparing, being able to adjust, having a, maybe a plan B or a backup plan when you feel like, oh, I got these three jokes lined up and it's going to kill them. And the person that, uh, before you maybe even touches on those subjects and you see it's not Man. the right thing or oh, like you yeah, said, it's that, reading that room. That so happens too. That's a great so that thing shit, for that me. Shit is that's, why I don't, that's why I go into these open mics and doing these shows. Doing the showcases, I don't like because I'm the first. Because I'm new. Yeah. But I'm funny. So a lot of niggas fuck with me. But they like, nigga, you new. And this is not an open mic. So I'm going to put you up first. Because right. niggas that's been there. And I respect yeah, that. You know, got to get you the people feel I got I got I to earn mine. I'm not, keep, yeah. Yeah, I gotta, I'm not tripping off that. Let these niggas know what I'm about. So I'll, I'll go first. And then like, I wouldn't know what the room is like. You got to make, you got to set the tone. Yeah, you the tone setter you for sure. You the tone setter when you go up there. So you just got to like, it get to the, like, it used to make me nervous hosting. But. I was up there the whole night because I'm hosting, so I can say whatever the fuck I want to, and then if it don't, it's not funny. I can get the fuck off. Right. So <laughs> it's like it's easier in situations like that, or if you got like more than five minutes, or you got like some real time, you can keep talking. Because nine times out of ten, when when you especially when you starting off and you're not established like a lot of these comedians are, and you start to talking, people not gonna listen. You gotta like mm -mm. say some outrageous ass shit. Yeah. Get their people attention. Like, gotta get that yeah. attention grabber for sure. What the fuck is this nigga talking no, about? So true. like I'll just like I know I'm I'll start off. I just like she said I talk about she talk about her kids. I talk about my kids because mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time with my kids outside of like being in comedy. I don't really do too much or nothing but like mm -hmm. hang out with my niggas right. and my kids. Mm -hmm. So like. I, I talk shit about my kids because my <laughs> kids are my kids are interesting. My daughter's like four, and if you ever had a conversation with this nigga, you'd be like, "Where did Bruh. you come from? Like, what <laughs> planet, <laughs> nigga? You're not from this planet, bro." No, like, she like, don't real. talk like she's four. No. She don't. She, <laughs> she don't think like she's four. She don't act like she's four. She don't talk. Like she's like, nigga. But exactly, what the fuck? That's, that's something to talk about in your comedy. You and feel stuff. me? Some people and then can my relate son with. is like the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. He's like a, a fucking twelve year old boy to a, the T. Yeah. To the right, point where right. you like, like you to the point where you like, I see why my parents didn't like me at that age. That's like my <laughs> nigga, right. I get it now. I see why my parents didn't like me at that age. You fucking stupid. <laughs> you're not stupid. You just right. don't you think know. you know better. You're not right. thinking you, about all the little shit. Yeah, you know what you, I'm saying? You, like getting adult, in the bed with your dirty clothes. Yeah, like, come on, bro. Yeah, as an adult, you know better. But you gotta realize that's a 12 year old boy. You we give kids like that more responsibility than they really not do with deal with at first. For sure, for you sure. You feel me? So like like when I be talking to his mom, I gotta be like, you gotta calm down. He only twelve. She's like, he should know he shouldn't. He's twelve. Nigga, he shouldn't know nothing but what you still Still teaching him, and as he grow, he gonna know. Now, if he just don't get it after a certain age, I get it. But the mm -hmm. nigga's learning; he's getting more responsibility than he's ever had in his life at this point. Yeah. When you turn 10, 11, 12 that's when you get to walk home from school. That's when you get to stay home a little bit later. Like if your parents want to go out and they can't find nobody to watch, you get to stay home. You gotta if you got younger siblings, you gotta do right. for them and shit. Nigga, you just you just mm -hmm. you just had to be reminded to wipe your ass thoroughly like a year ago. Right. Now right. you gotta do all this shit independently. It, right. It's not it's not a easy two month process nigga this is gonna take some couple years like about right. 15 if you ain't got it then you might be a little slow you know <laughs> we gonna address up. that when we get to it but <laughs> it's just like life and i feel like a lot of comedians like like the uh it's a lot of comedians in the north cal scene that's hella funny but if you listen to their shit all they doing is talking about some real shit yeah. like you got like rico rico the great you got regina givens you got uh jerry law you got jay rich you mm -hmm. got fucking uh 
These are comedians you might not know. Shay Sugar. Shay Sugar. She's hella funny. Mm-hmm. Fucking Shannon Battle is one of the greatest promoters in NorCal <laughs> comedy. But, but that's that's what we need, though. Since we don't know these names, we need a platform like Man, something funny yes, so y'all can yes. expose yeah, us to them. Just, so that's, that's what we hear and well, that's what she, we about, about for sure. You about to see a lot of them. Yeah, she Man, just that's shot, major. Uh, like I said, Shannon Battle is a great uh, producer and a uh, promoter of shows. He got like all the best comedians in NorCal together. Yeah, he just did an all black show. All black it, show. Uh, February 9th at, at the punchline. Nice. At the punchline. Well, that's a big major, ass fucking, yeah. major bag right. alert. And it was all black comedians. Come yeah. on. Well, she shot it because I was in LA with Russell and them, but she. Uh, she that's about the content about to drop. Yeah, yeah. come on. It was, it was, it was hilarious. Before we came here, nah, it's fucking hilarious. Hell yeah, hilarious, bro. We, we here for it. Yeah, I was like I said, I was going to ask about a, a a hardship and a feel good moment, but I feel like you kind of encapsulate both of those. Just y'all talking about just well, traveling, exposing I, yeah. yourselves to different types of audiences, but mm-hmm. also finding your groove, finding your niche, getting that level of confidence and comfortability. I, I can tell you where it came. Like natural. when it started, like where it like really picked up for me, it mm-hmm. was uh, my birthday. And I did lose shit in Oakland. Okay, okay. And I uh, it was my it was like the biggest room I've done. And my mom came. Yeah. My mom and my cousins and uh, <laughs> shit. And then I was like, nigga, I killed it. The fam bam came. He I killed, killed it from it. the fam. Yeah. It's lit. I killed it. It's and, up. and for Luke, like Lou, even when I got outside, Lou was like, nigga, you because he asked me how because I I got there a little early. He was talking. He was like, how long you been doing comedy? He's like two months. And he was like, oh shit. Yeah. Nigga, oh, well, I'm on your he's head. Like, you like, yeah. hey, nigga, right. gonna be watching. This is a big. This is a big moment. And I was like, I, I, okay. I was a little nervous. The niggas started throwing me shots and shit because I told them it was my birthday and shit. So they were showing me love and got, shit. Got my, a little loose? Yeah, then my oh, mom. Oh, it definitely got loose that night. Oh, man. That was a wild night up in there. Woo, that, that was a wild night. night. Yeah, <laughs> a wild night up in there. Um, and then my mom came and I got up. Nigga, I killed that shit. I, but I was all, the whole time I was talking shit about my mama. Man. <laughs> hey, shout out moms. <laughs> shout out moms. Shout out She's moms, a trooper, man. man. For she, real. she ate that shit. And then, like, they was fucking with her after. And right, she they, was still was, just. That was you the know? whole night. That's, that's all what's the up. The whole night was they mama. was fucking with her. That's what's yeah. up. That's hella Set the tone. Right, really right, set the tone. Right. He wasn't even the first one, but set the tone. I was like yeah. the third one that night, huh? Mm-hmm. I think you went before me. That's the first night I went up right before you, yeah. Nice. She did pretty good too, but then when I got off loose, like you only be doing this shit. For, you look, he's like you look real comfortable for two months. Yeah, there and you I go. I was like, oh, okay. See, it kind of one of them. Yeah, it was like, oh, know. okay. I'm coming for you, nigga. Come on, man. <laughs> shit. Well, uh, as we wrap this up, uh, for one, thank y'all again for hopping on. Take some Thanks time for having us. to thank just you. to let the people know what's next. What can we expect either from just Lancey Bo from ZZ or from something funny or uh, y'all as as a duo? What can we expect? What should uh, the people be on the lookout for? I mean, me personally, uh, just more content. Uh, I've been doing a lot of shows, but uh, I've been getting shit about my content, so I'm nice. gonna step my yes. content game up right. a little yes. bit that's more. It's it. easier said than done. I'm right with you. I'm yeah. right with you. Yeah, I've been getting hella shit from Russ about my content. Bro, I'm, 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 with, I'm, I'm with you, bro, on that <laughs> like, one. Bro, it's, it's, right, it is a, a lot. I'm get it, and then it blew my mind recently because I did those TikToks. Yeah, they, they didn't really go viral on my shit, mm-hmm. but. Like she said, she know hella people and they went viral. Like every yeah. other oh, day, yeah, people sharing it. It's like going, people in, you know that up. I know from music sharing yeah. it and shit yeah. like that. Me big so, names major, and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, no, when we her. we about to drop a lot of content with something funny. So I don't know if y'all following the something funny page, but come on, plug it. Come on, plug it. Where we're something at? X funny on Instagram, and then we have the YouTube as well, yeah. which okay. is something funny. Something and it'll funny. it'll soon be on like Apple and all that For shit sure. on it'll, it'll on be iTunes. The description I mean, below it'll be in the bottom. It'll be all there. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're about to drop hella content. Yeah, for something sure. Summer, Let going. the people know where, where can they follow y'all, social okay. media avenues. Um, where can they follow you? Instagram. Uh, GC, I- they can follow me on uh, IG, GC underscore Lancey Bo. Uh, like this summer, just, you know, work with me. I'm dropping more content, but this summer, as far as like shows and shit, I'm going crazy. I'm, I'm, Come on. I'm working on getting my own room and bringing in the comedians I know and doing my own thing. Yes, sir. I'm, I've done a lot of these shows and a lot of this shit. And it's, the comedy game is kind of clicky in NorCal because it's so low-key and it's so like tight-knit. Yeah. So it's like hard to get into other people's shit unless you with like unless you like with they unless shit you know to know you feel me so yeah. i'm like we working on getting our own room and when that happened i'm gonna be doing shows out the ass this summer is gonna be crazy i'm Let's gonna go. be Man. every room i can i'm going to right now i'm building up my content and spending more time with my kids so when the mm-hmm. summer come you know i don't feel like you know i because I, I get to i get to so busy and going to these shows that i don't feel like i'm spending enough time with my kids as a you know, person part. with kids so i'll be like Fact. i took a little break from going to shows and I'm in like I just got a new job so I'm in uh building up on that and then now I'm uh working with I'm like um spending time with my kids so if I'm not working on content for the page I'm just doing that so you might not see me on a lot of shows I'm hosting a couple things but, but we out here working March that's 6, all I need right? to know we fucking working 
March sixth. You March sixth. Um, that- I'm at the touch. Of, yeah, March sixth. I'm at the touch of class. Uh, you feel me? I don't know who the headliner is yet, but it will be on the flyer. It's some of NorCal's hottest comics coming through there to do their thing. So we're gonna be sharing the shit out of it. So just yeah, follow our shit pages out of it. and. You you know. Let's right. go. No, nah, that's major. Once again, thank you, ZZ. Thank you, Mr. Lancey Bo. Thank for a you. great episode. This has been episode fucking 51 of What's the Woo. Wave. Tune in every Wednesday. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. Woo.